Illuminati is a video essay channel about scams and other hot button issues, and if you know who I am, then you probably know who she is. There's some obvious similarities between our contents. We both produce fully scripted documentaries, for lack of a better word, about topics people find interesting. She's called out Autism Speaks, SeaWorld, PETA, Andrew Tate, and The Right. It's time once again to stop pyramid schemes, scams, and other forms of corruption. A noble pursuit, no doubt. But recently, a boatload of information has come out about Illuminati that has painted her as a manipulative, vindictive individual who in many ways is comparable to the people she criticizes. Leaking private information to discredit someone, lying to her audience, paying people to sift through her ex-collaborator's content to find dirt on them, and running an alt account to try and ruin their career behind the scenes. All of this and more has led to the destruction of her reputation amongst viewers. The most ironic part is that she started it all herself by calling out another YouTuber for supposed plagiarism. This is the turbulent story of Illuminati. The first video on Illuminati's channel, uploaded at the beginning of 2019, is titled, What is an MLM? The History of Multi-Level Marketing. It introduces viewers to MLMs, a controversial marketing strategy where salespeople earn income not only from direct product sales, but also from sales made by others they've recruited to the business, rather than receiving a fixed salary. All that may sound like a nebulous definition, an easier way to understand the concept is by thinking about it like a pyramid. At the highest level, you have the person who either created or sells a particular product. Product. This person then recruits others underneath them to sell the product as well, and those individuals in turn recruit others below them to sell that same product. The people at the bottom of this structure contribute a portion of their earnings to those above them, as each salesman or woman receives a share of the money earned by their recruits. If you haven't already noticed, the triangle shape is what's caused many to label multi-level marketing as a pyramid scheme, with some going as far as to call them scams. Blair set out to expose these MLMs to her audience, with this video in particular being an introduction. Her channel art even reflects this theme, with the recognizable triangle-shaped head with the large eye in the middle, based on the Eye of Providence, which you're probably familiar with from seeing it in pop culture. Or if you grew up when I did, your obvious introduction to it was Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. However, even in her first video, it's obvious that this isn't Blair's debut on YouTube. She welcomes back her viewers. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Blair, or the Illuminati, and today I'm super excited to talk about the subject that made me make this video. We're talking about- That's because the channel creation date is actually May 9th, 2013, implying that a large catalog of content was at some point removed. What kickstarted Illuminati's initial rise to popularity wasn't video essays, but a much older trend that took YouTube by storm a few years ago, Reddit videos. As of March 21st, 2019, the Illuminati channel had accumulated nearly 100,000 subscribers from browsing subreddits and reacting to them, laughing at r slash entitled parents, r slash choosing beggars, r slash nice guys and nice girls, respectively, and criticizing anti-vaxxers was the bread and butter of her channel. Over the years, Reddit has accumulated a considerable amount of cringe-worthy content. Shocking, I know. Prompting users to subscribe to specific subreddits dedicated to showcasing it. Popular YouTubers like Soot House, Sorrow TV, Wild Spartans, and of course Blair took advantage of this readily available material and made content out of the best of the best of it. They found that they could pump out content with ease by selecting 20 or so cringy posts from these conveniently organized subreddits and reading them aloud in their videos with minimal editing required. Surprisingly, this approach brought them significant success, surpassing what one might expect from such simple content. And honestly, who could even blame them for capitalizing on it? At the time, there was one playlist on Illuminati's channel that gave an inkling of what was to come, titled Anti-MLM. By early 2019, the Reddit trend had already begun to die, Soot House and Sorrow TV, who had capitalized on it the most, stopped posting altogether shortly after it reached its peak. Others who hopped on the bandwagon like Call Me Carson quickly hopped right off. If Blair wanted her channel to keep growing, she needed a new type of content, or she risked fading into obscurity. Luckily, a life raft would come her way in the form of video essays. Sunny B2, Patrick CC, and others began to make videos documenting interesting subjects. From the ever-classic rise and fall of an internet personality, to videos about specific controversies or websites, and even lists and icebergs. You name a mildly entertaining topic, and there's bound to be a video essay about it. It's a genre composed of well-edited, easy-to-digest content that gives the audience 
science new food for thought, whether relatively basic or highly philosophical, on a weekly basis. Blair rightly viewed this burgeoning market as a land of opportunity. As I previously mentioned, this type of content is the only one that even remains on Blair's channel. She quickly became dead set on exposing various companies, including Lime Cosmetics, Chanel, Herbalife, The Salvation Army, and any MLMs she came across. She also ventured into broader topics like the education system, expanding beyond her specific focus on company exposés. The education system is as outdated as it is broken. If it doesn't work for us and hinders students from feeling encouraged, creative, and free to explore the world around them, make no mistake, it's broken. However, it's important to note that Blair's approach to exposing these companies comes short of proper investigative journalism. Instead, she gathers information from news articles and other documentaries and presents it in a condensed format for her audience. This doesn't mean her content lacks legitimacy, but it does indicate that her videos don't necessarily go above and beyond what typical YouTubers like myself do. By 2020, Blair had ditched Reddit altogether. And who could blame her? The video essays were vastly more successful. By the middle of that year, she had earned nearly half a million subscribers. Her videos were averaging more than 250,000 views, and she was uploading every few days. She was easily one of, if not the most prolific video essayist on YouTube. The output was unheard of. Each of these videos were fully researched, written, and edited in full without cutting any real corners. Videos on her channel were now broken up into categories such as psychology, history, shady businesses and charities, and of course, MLM deep dives, which were still a tried and true method of getting clicks. Faceless companies that profit off of recruiting others to sell a product many consider useless are easy to hate, and for every hateable MLM, you can be sure there was an Illuminati video to cover it. Now, you may be wondering how Blair managed to produce such an incredible amount of content on such a regular basis. There's no way she's doing everything on her own, right? Well, the simple answer is no. Even if she were taking 60 milligrams of Adderall every day with three Starbucks orders on the side, it would still be too much work for one person. Just like mainstream creators such as Mr. Beast, many video essay channels have started paying others to assist them in producing content more frequently frequently without sabotaging quality. Creators like Patrick CC, Magnates Media, and myself have contracted additional help to keep a steady output of videos. So yes, you guys can rest easy and stop asking if I do meth in the comment section. If you guys check the description of Blair's video starting from 2019, you'll find a list of researchers, writers, editors, and thumbnail designers who have contributed to her work. Collaboration plays a crucial role in the success of many creative endeavors, and YouTube is no exception. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket, a bi-weekly series where bad businesses go to die. We will discuss any and everything from bad charities, terrible CEOs, and businesses that have a lot to hide. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're talking about an industry that has come up quite a few times before supplements. Mm, 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 man, mm. But those helping her with her content, for the most part, didn't have online followings of their own. Instead, they were seeking behind-the-scenes employment. At the same time, Blair was also collaborating with other creators who wanted to grow their brand. The Sad Milk channel was launched in December of 2019 is a collaborative project between YouTubers, featuring Flinders, Illuminati, One Topic at a Time, Oz Media, Salty Reddits, The Click, and Wonderstruck Guy. It was essentially a reaction channel that posted similar content to the reading Reddit videos that made Blair blow up in the first place. The food truck sign said, fries $5 and cheese $2. And I only realized the cheese was meant for hamburgers after they <laughs> ended. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you want cheese fries? Uh, here you go, sir. Yeah, they're not wrong. This channel would be a successful venture, boasting over 200,000 subscribers. It also helps to boost the careers of those who contributed to it, who could now cross-pollinate their audience to share viewers. The channel posted videos throughout 2020, despite a community community post outlining that a few of its members, namely Salty, OT, and The Click, would no longer be appearing in his videos. At the time, the only explanation given for this was that they had some creative differences behind the scenes, and that those leaving wanted to focus more on their own streaming careers. The post assured the viewers that the channel was not done for, and would still be posting videos with the remaining cast, even teasing some IRL group content. But on December 24th, 2020, its final video was posted, starring Illuminati, Oz, Damian Lee, and Wonder. After this, the channel was dead in the water, with fans wondering why they left it behind. But at the end of the day, creative differences was as good an explanation as any for the initial breakup. Blair continued posting content, refining her editing, writing, and topics until her channel was running like a well-oiled machine, as did her peers. The Clicks channel grew to more than 1 million subscribers, and Oz Media similarly grew to more than half a million. Blair's channel, meanwhile, peaked at 1.7, a level most creators can only dream of. 
250 million channel views is sure to equate to a lot of AdSense money as well, and Blair continued to be one of the most successful creators in the video essay space. Venturing more so into political content, such as criticizing trends from conservatives that she saw as disingenuous. Nobody knew much about these creators outside of their videos, especially Blair, seeing as her content was relatively impersonal. Her opinion was certainly relevant to the content, but it wasn't like the viewpoints she expressed were anything out of the ordinary. For the most part, it was the research and presentation that made her videos worthwhile for the audience to come back to time and time again, to the tune of millions of new channel views every month. That should have been where the story ended, but thanks to Blair, it's not. The first domino in toppling Blair's empire was actually pushed by her. On April 20th, 2023, Blair tweets out, Not at Legal Eagle broaching my editors to take my video style. And when they didn't give up the info, they literally copied, and by the way, I have the messages from my editors, and found an email from them too. Just changed the color from purple to blue, huh? Interesting. This is an allegation of plagiarism. She claims that someone from another YouTuber's team tried to steal her editor's style, had been caught fishing for information about how to execute said style, and when the information wasn't given, they just figured it out themselves. She followed this up with an email from the editor in question who wrote, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle, and I was wondering if there were some After Effects plugins you guys use for things like the intro to the first NFL video, where the lighter color appears to stick out in 3D. We could recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about so you know what I mean. Thanks, Danny. Blair then states that he also went to my Discord to try and get more to copy the style. Here we have the editor, Danny, asking if he's allowed to post a video essay he made inspired by Blair's channel since he wouldn't want to break a no self promo rule. Eight minutes later, he asks if there's some way he can talk to one of the editors because he'd like to know how they did a specific effect. Another user tells him he has to be a higher rank in the server to post links and then directs him to the proper channel. He follows up again by asking if he could speak to the editors but this is where the screenshot ends. Blair then shows the two videos side by side, first hers and then Legal Eagles, as evidence of this plagiarism. She follows us up with another example of a highlight effect being used on text to add to her narrative that Legal Eagles editors were stealing her style. Blair concludes by saying, To be honest, I wouldn't have believed any of this was trying to replicate my videos if not for the email and Discord stuff that was done preemptive to their video coming out. Like, talk about, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just make it a little different. She finishes with this meme about copying schoolwork to illustrate her point. Now, while Blair's initial tweet did get more than 700 likes, every follow-up tweet she made on the thread was increasingly less popular, as many realized how ridiculous this allegation was as they read on. Firstly, any point about editing is hard to justify in the first place, place because every video editor draws from inspiration when creating content. On top of that, people's editing style on YouTube usually just comes down to basic effects and presets which the video editors don't even make. They come stock with software like Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, and DaVinci Resolve. But not only is the initial premise shaky on its own, the actual examples she shows, being the ripped paper and highlighting effects, are extremely common visuals for video essayists to use on YouTube. Thousands of independent creators have employed these two techniques. The highlighter effect in question is commonly referred to by many as the Vox highlighter effect because of the video publisher Vox using it in their videos often. There's plenty of tutorials too, both old and new, that inform aspiring editors how to create the look. The same goes for this ripped paper effect, with thousands of stock photos being available for commercial purchase that showcase the same thing, and plenty of YouTubers and documentaries have used that background for its simple appealing look on thousands of other occasions as well. Tedious details aside, the intentions of Danny, Legal Eagle's editor, just don't come off as malicious. It's as simple as that. He even states he could recreate the effects himself, but thought it was more convenient to ask for assistance. For someone like Blair, whose channel contains almost nothing purely original and is, like many channels, a melting pot of various ideas and influences from all over the place, to complain about her editing style being copied, something she isn't even particularly known for, is strange. Many creators and the replies express their confusion. Your example is highlighting text? Vox would like a word, as would my videos from 2015 and just about a million other creators. You think you invented the highlighter animation and have a claim to it? We've been using that effect before your channel even existed. Just to clarify, one of Legal Eagle's editors asked one of your editors what plugin they 
used for a personal video they were working on for their own channel, I take plagiarism really seriously, so I'm interested in an explanation of what exactly is wrong here. Furthermore, some began questioning if this wild and baseless accusation was just a one-off incident or part of a larger pattern of behavior from Blair. Legal Eagle himself responded the same day in confusion, reiterating the points many had already made before he managed to address the controversy, stating, YouTube is great because it's collaborative and the rising tide raises all ships. My team and I always try to provide original, high-quality, informative content. We try to help others when they ask for it. There aren't really any trade secrets around here. Blair quietly deleted the post and didn't make another public statement for the time being, seemingly backing off on her prior stance. However, the floodgates had been opened. H Bomber Guy responded with his own accusation, saying that Blair had plagiarized the documentary on her own channel and in a much more egregious way. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Now, not only was the initial allegation discredited, but her credibility as a narrator was done for. She looked to be guilty of the same thing she had accused others of, and to a much greater degree. Plagiarism is one of the most serious accusations you can levy against a creator since it devalues their work entirely. And with this new accusation towards Blair, it was about her writing, not just some video editing trick. In hindsight, Site, her tweet that started this all looked like projection. Her deleting her original tweet against Legal Eagle didn't stop those flooding her replies, demanding an explanation. For now, she stayed silent, apart from a statement the same day claiming someone had been trying to hack into her accounts. Meanwhile, the drama wouldn't be contained to Twitter. Creators knew the time to drop videos was now, while the topic was still hot. First, Illuminati starts off with this email containing supposedly nefarious activity. This editor is trying to steal her editor's style, but that's not really what's going on here, right? They're just asking about some plugin, a pre-existing asset that they may have used. Original content. Tom says, oof, I used to watch her stuff, but found it odd how she was able to churn out so many video essays at a regular pace. I had no proof that anything malicious was going on, but the vibes were just off, you know? Glad it wasn't all just in my imagination. Well, the the, the thing is, Legal Eagle, I don't even think needed to defend himself. I don't think they had to come out and say anything at all. The community ate Illuminati alive for the claim because it was so outrageous. The public was eating Illuminati alive. And yet, it was still just the beginning of Blair's no good, very bad week. As it turns out, the former members of Sad Milk were watching the situation from a distance, and it was becoming increasingly apparent to them that they couldn't stay silent about their own experiences with Blair for much longer, in light of this new drama. As such, The Click and Wonderstruck posted their own extensive threads about Blair with a slew of claims, which at the time were unsubstantiated. Click began by clarifying that his departure from their collab channel was not an amicable one, but that he left because of Blair's behavior. He lists her typical behaviors as lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor or anger management, to name a few. Eventually, I believe pretty much the whole group left her. The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour screaming at me for an array of random things, calling me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me. There's no way you can have the resume you claim and be this fucking stupid and so on. No one even raised their voice back at her. I left along with several other members, half the group at the time. She spent the next few months spreading lies and half-truths about us on the Sad Milk Reddit page and vague posting on Twitter. I still have all all the screenshots. She would turn friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you so she had allies against you, rallying mainly banned problematic community members known to be liars and conflict seekers. When people started questioning that maybe she was the reason everyone left, there was a very convenient digging up of 11 to 14 year old videos of me, stuff I made back when I started my channel in 2009 when I was a teenager. And as you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time aged like milk. I publicly owned up to my past mistakes and apologized, doing my best to be transparent and honest about my past. She would still harp on it, ignoring the fact that it had already been addressed, trying to direct as much attention to it as possible, publicly stating it was a bad apology, along with vague posting about it in comments on the collaboration channel, maybe in an attempt to get people to assume I had been kicked out for poor behavior, rather than leave because of her own behavior. She, assuming it was her, she had channel access, also liked to pull what I can only describe as very petty acts of revenge. For example, some people left comments on the collaboration channel saying, good that Click left. They obviously got ratioed hard, as people 
people were there for creators. She would manually go in and delete the ratio in comments, but leave the original hate comment. She tried to gain control of my Discord when it surpassed hers in size by tossing around accusations at staff and trying to get rid of my team and replacing it with hers, giving me the ultimatum to fire my entire senior team or be publicly fired from Sad Milk myself. This is just a brief summary of events. It's sad to see she hasn't changed. All of this painted Illuminati as vindictive, petty, and spiteful. Digging through your 10-year-old videos to find dirt, spreading rumors behind your back, turning your friends against you, these are all hallmarks of, as any Twitter girl would put it, a toxic person. Wonder revealed that he had lived with Blair for a period of time, and that that time was basically hell. After being threatened with a breach of contract for speaking out, I can confirm that the behavior Blair exhibits is entirely accurate here. Sad Milk at the time was the nearest thing to family I had, which sounds pathetic, but the content creator space is a very isolating one. The amount of hours I would spend online making drafts, editor tutorials for new hires, staying up trying to get some editing in if editors were shorthanded, I missed Christmas with my brother and father fixing the mistake of the editor she hired, and I didn't even get a thank you, and it took me more than half a month to even get paid. Meanwhile, she delays payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes, visit BMW dealerships, and spend hundreds on food in a day. While I do hold my beliefs towards certain matters, every month or so there's a new villain of the week. And they would one second be a normal person in our lives, and the next second, suddenly a hidden monster through, you guessed it, Blair's mouth. To say Sad Milk split on creative differences is a joke, it's a flat out lie. Again, I'm aware of the bridges burned, but I can confirm that call took place where she screamed, cursed, and had a meltdown towards the click in one topic. It was a train wreck. I tried making a schedules, I motivated Blair during another mental breakdown of hers not to delete the channel or the Discord, since I actively read through the comments on both. And we had people who we mattered to. After months of behind-the-scenes insults towards Click and OT, it became so stale and negative. Yeah, we all took part. But after it going on so long, it just became day after day Blair would sit and check OT's social blade. She would make fake accounts to stalk them. Not just them, but a large portion of the commentary community. I've personally seen her try to get her lawyer to shut down anyone who says anything against her, and they ruined her day by saying, yeah, we can't really do anything. It's insane. Innocent people don't work so hard to try and silence others. We would get no work done. I can't count how many times I pleaded and set up meetings for us to do something and nobody cared. I thought I had a friend who was hurting. Then I saw I had moved to villain. Blair, you can't hide anymore. Sooner or later, you are going to push everyone who cared about you away and you'd realize the world isn't out to get you. But you made your fears a reality all on your own. Oz Media posted a similar call-out thread reiterating much of the same sentiment about how she was a toxic, vindictive person. Given their prior public collabs with Blair and the photos of Blair's house that Wonder provided, there was some credibility to these accusations. If these claims, along with the accusations of plagiarism, were true, a more clear and sinister image of Blair's character was forming. But for the general public, none of it was easily verifiable, and without actual evidence showing that these events took place, who was to say what really happened? These threads were both posted on the 23rd of April, and five days later, Blair would apologize for what she described as jumping the gun on Legal Eagle. Despite every Everything that was said about her, this was the point where she could have just walked away. Neither The Click nor Wonder said they would be posting anything to their channels about it, meaning whatever allegations existed could have died then and there. And this could have been a forgotten footnote in the plagiarism drama. Instead, Blair tempted fate with a new response video. A video by Blair titled Illuminati Exposed was framed as the conclusive video on the topic. Blair opened by reiterating her regret over the tweet about Legal Eagle. Truthfully, I should have looked into this more instead of just putting the information out there the second I had a gut reaction about it. I should have asked him what the emails were about, but I didn't. And I made a mistake, and plain and simple, I was wrong. So to Legal Eagle and, and team, I just want to reiterate that I messed up and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you and of course to your team. She then sets out to debunk the accusation that she had plagiarized an older documentary by repurposing its script. She points out the part she read was a quote, not meant to be her own words, and that it was also credited in the description of the video. In his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary and even visually you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. Additionally, you can even see the dual ellipses on either end of that quote, indicating that more of that source was being cited. When you go to my sourcing page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. 
This is completely fair. The editing around that point of the video was a bit confusing and may lead some to believe the quote was being stolen rather than quoted, but given the appearance of a quote on screen during the part H Bomber guy showed, it seemed to be a valid response. However, this is mostly where the valid responses from Blair end, as the rest of the video devolves into unsubstantiated claims and a malicious revelation of personal information to try and discredit her former friend. Her segment on The Click opens by stating that she was aware of his use of slurs in 10 to 14 year old videos and that it had nothing to do with his departure from the group. However, she follows up by saying that the clique was still using horrifying language, her words, not mine, when she met him, specifically using the R slur, which has been deemed unacceptable. By who, I'm not sure. Maybe her Discord friend group, maybe Twitter, or maybe Reddit's moderation team. Unfortunately, when those videos surfaced, it wasn't really all that shocking to me as Oz Media and I had actually talked about how Click had been using the Arsler while we played games together. I thought, or I wanted to assume that I had misheard, but Oz said that he was uncomfortable with it and said something, but the language continued. The point is brushed aside as she moves on to a more serious allegation against the Click, that he was harboring a predator in his Discord server and did nothing about it. Apparently, in the Click's Discord server, there was a 19-year-old boy who bragged about dating a 12-year-old girl. Naturally, this raised some red flags, and after a server mod reached out to him for clarification, this individual reiterated that it wasn't a joke of any kind, and that him dating a 12-year-old was even supported by a therapist. Blair claimed that the Click's moderators did nothing to ban him from the server, forcing a mod to come to her for assistance. She then banned banned this predator from her personal community server, the Sad Milk server, and reported them to Discord. Blair then claims that this happened right after one of the Click's admins was caught sharing NSFW with known minors, and cites information from Rain.com to explain that this is a common tactic amongst the groomers, desensitizing minors to loot content over time. So we used this individual's ID number and we banned them from the Sad Milk server and from my server, and we reported them to Discord's trust and safety team who we hope did pursue this further. In an effort to have action taken against this predator in the Click's Discord, she messaged one topic, another member of Sad Milk and Click's good friend, asking for him to do something about it. After seeing the degenerate material in question, he left the group chat and reported and removed the individual himself. She concludes this section of the video by saying that the Click cultivated an environment that was unsafe for minors on his server. On your Discord server that had, and likely still has, minors present, you as an adult need to do the right thing and actually pay attention to what goes down in your server or ensure a team will take action against inappropriate behavior. I am sorry to those minors who were spoken to in such an inappropriate way. Now, in this video, Blair never states that this was the reason why she stopped working with the Click. In fact, she doesn't address the vast majority of the points he raised in his thread. Instead, she focuses on highlighting that he used the R slur and is supposedly indifferent towards files being on his Discord. She gives a two-minute diatribe passionately discussing why grooming children is bad, as if anyone needed that explanation. She even states that this situation made her regret trying to get his channel reinstated when it was previously deleted for some old content that violated terms of service. She claims she spoke to YouTube directly and implies her efforts are the reason why the channel still exists today. But because of his mishandling of his community, she now regrets that. Many were quick to point out the ridiculousness of the pet allegation, especially with no screenshots to back up the notion that the click hadn't tried to help. Given the server had 40,000 members, there were bound to be a few bad apples in the bunch. Nevertheless, the section paled in comparison to the issues present in her response to Wonder. It similarly avoided most of what was said in the thread, instead pivoting to attacking his character as a means to discredit his claims. Blair begins by claiming she never neglected to pay Wonder, which was one of his allegations, where he said that payments to editors were delayed while Blair visited BMW dealerships and ordered Uber Eats. He says that it took more than half a month for him to be paid, while Blair claims that this was just the way she and many companies pay their employees on a bi-weekly basis. She then says the reason Wonder lived with her was because she generously extended him a job offer for an easy editing gig and allowed him to live under her roof for a time. According to her, despite this generosity, he trashed the car she lent it to him. Within one month of using the vehicle, the car was visibly soiled, trash was littered in the car, it contained dirty clothing which consisted of like I think two pairs of dirty boxers and like maybe three mismatched socks. There was also a huge crack that went across most of the windshield shield and for some reason the glove box compartment in the front passenger seat was somehow broken. The state of the vehicle was shocking to be honest, but at this point I was just happy to have my car back and know that it couldn't be damaged any further. This segment mostly comes down to Blair publishing petty interpersonal drama that never needed to be made public in the first place, but in fairness Wonder initially did the same by posting pictures of her house that made it look like it belonged on an episode of Hoarders. Nonetheless, Blair then delved into Wonder's mental health and addressed 
express his intention of suicide, as well as a message where he stated that the emotional pressure from hers will push him over the edge. Blair didn't explain why this was at all relevant, but it appeared to be an attempt by her to make Wonder look unstable. Inexplicably, she spends a few minutes talking about how her dog and his dog didn't get along when they lived together. The tension began with our dogs and his unwillingness to help ease the situation between our pets. I did everything I thought of at the time to introduce James and Casper in a way that facilitated a good relationship between the dogs. They met on neutral ground at a dog park and only had supervised play at the house. While I appreciate her expert analysis on which dog was in the right or whatever, believe it or not, there actually is a reason for this. It was the reason she provided for why there was so much conflict while they lived together. Wonder claimed it was because of her behavior, but Blair suggested that it came down to the dog situation, her recommending her therapist to him, which created a conflict of interest, and the car being trashed. In response to the accusation of being a hoarder, Blair clarifies that this was just one messy room in her house due to the ongoing process of moving in. In isolation, her point actually holds some merit, as she highlights that Wonder posted an irrelevant photo with the intention of humiliating her. I feel the need to point out these minor details since the out-of-context photos of the house being moved into are being used as a way to show that I'm a supposed monster and that, quote, my home is a mess, like hoarder's bad. And just, what was the point of this, Wonder? Why would you even bother posting something like this except to humiliate me? This was a room that we told you we were using to move and we let you know it was off limits to you. That photo alone shows your consistent lack of respect for Oz's and my boundaries. And wonder, I am sorry that I was ever friends with you. Towards the end of the video, Blair starts crying as she expresses how deeply the falling out between her and Oz Media affected her. You were right. I am afraid of looking stupid and weak online, and yet I am those things right now. You've been with me through a lot of really intense and personal situations in my life. You were there throughout the entire process of my mom's cancer diagnosis, her various treatments and hospitalizations. And I know there were many times when I had to run out the door suddenly because there was a crash cart in her room and they didn't know if she was gonna make it. And you said you'd stay at the house and watch Casper so I could go to my mom. The video concludes with Blair acknowledging that she wants to take responsibility for her faults, such as her impulsivity in the legal eagle situation. Her immediate fan base, with little knowledge of the situation, were supportive. However, some viewers found her remarks lacking substance. They noted that the segments on the click appeared to be thin on evidence, despite her initial promise of providing screenshots as evidence. No actual screenshots were shown to support her claims against the click. Furthermore, many took issue with her disclosing Wonder's mental health status. Posting Wonder's suicide note is disgusting. I don't care you two fell out, he trusted you with a very sensitive situation, and you use that to get the focus off of yourself. That's disgusting. You have no shame. This is immensely disappointing. I was hoping the information and rumors I'd been hearing about you for years were untrue, but it looks as if I was sorely mistaken. The click hinted that a detailed response was to come, while the other former Sad Milk members posted their own rebuttals on Twitter. While the dislike bar on Blair's video climbed, people waited with bated breath to see if the click's response would be the final nail in the coffin of this saga. On May 2nd, 2023, The Click released his video. It only addresses his portion of Illuminati's response, as well as verifying the claims he previously made about her. To debunk the claim about him not doing anything in regards to the Discord predator, The Click clarified that he was asleep while the situation was unfolding, and by the time he woke up, it was already resolved. She brought one topic into a chat room, as she shown in her video and her accusations. However, her statement in these DMs about Click knowing is very odd, as I would have been very unconscious when the ban was happening. She might be referring to me knowing by the time I woke up, but the fact remains I wasn't there, nor did I endorse this random creep. In her video, Blair claims she reached out to the click for his aid in resolving the issue. As he shows in his, he was the first one to reach out, while her responses back were fairly vague and didn't provide any of the relevant information at all. This recontextualized her messages with one topic. They weren't about resolving the predator problem, they were about making the click look bad to his friend. Instead of directly messaging the click to address her concerns, Blair messaged his friend and accused him of doing nothing. 
However, it's important to note that the click wasn't around at the time, so reaching out to him directly wouldn't have been possible anyway. He was asleep. In his response, the click addresses a point that Blair emphasized, but is seen by some as a non-issue. Blair claimed that she could never be friends with someone who used the R slur in video games. However, the click points out that despite her messaging others about how problematic it was, she continued to hang out with him regardless. She would never be friends with someone that used that language, yet she regularly played games with me as a friend during this time, where I allegedly kept on saying these things. Which one is it? I, I don't think you can have both. He then says he stopped using the word retarded in content as he didn't want to offend anyone. This pivots to her deleting comments, which while it can't be proven, a before and after screenshot of the Sad Milk channel showed that anyone speaking positively about him or protesting his removal did in fact have their comments suspiciously deleted. Blair herself on her main account then began snidely spreading rumors in comment sections, saying, I didn't say the N-word in old videos, just saying. The videos in question were between 10 and 14 years old, by the way. But all of this is relatively petty. Even the accusations regarding Click's Discord could be chalked up to miscommunication. But he then reveals she was spreading rumors about him not respecting his Discord mods, as if unwashed internet janitors deserve respect in the first place. No offense to you guys that moderate my Discord. Okay, actually, some offense intended. They spend hours of their lives to help some YouTuber they love and look up to. The very least thing any content creator can and should do is give their teams the respect they deserve. Mods have always been the backbone of every YouTube and Twitch community. To disrespect them and try to just throw them away is insane. They are the ones who have a pulse on the community. Like, I'll never be able to properly thank my entire team, but God, I'll try. Ah, this click one topic sh has me heated. These stupid how could you not care about the people who care about your community the most? How? Usually, YouTubers try to fight against cultivating parasocial relationships. I guess Blair didn't get the memo. She continued spreading the claim that the click harbored a predator on his Discord server and threw a hissy fit about him making a harmless white van joke in an old video, as well as pulling other jokes out of context to imply he was a degenerate. Here's the same chat room again in what I'm assuming is suggesting that my, uh, my god, I'm so down with the kids boomer joke from Twitter has pedo implications. Oh, the younglings think I'm so cool. Blair then began enlisting people to dig through 10-year-old Let's Plays to find dirt on him. Again, here's the video still up with the R slur at 340-ish. Keep in mind, this was 2010, when the click was in high school and didn't have any kind of audience. She talked with Glee about the day when the public would eventually become aware of his past slur usage and cancel him. Ever since we made the sad milk announcement, some fans have been putting it together. While I'm mostly the bad b some are figuring it out. Listen, I have click on video saying the F slur and R slur. He will put himself with his own ego, and I won't have to deal with any of that. Oh yeah, it's in his old videos. Some Discord users are overweight mods, some are e-girls, some are traps, and some make Machiavellian plots to destroy their friends' careers because 10 years ago they said retard. The amount of spite you must feel to devote this much energy to someone who did nothing wrong to you is unimaginable. I'm a level with y'all here. Reading through things and seeing people excuse click saying the R slur because it was 10 years ago, and it's irrelevant is super yikes to me. Super yikes. Oh boy. It's super yikes, guys. Again, I'm the same age as Click, and that word wasn't ever in my vocabulary. Not 10 years ago, not now, because it was never appropriate. Same with him saying the N-word and F-slur. Being edgy is not an excuse, and seeing it dismissed so lightly like that is actually gross. As if Idubs wasn't calling himself and his fans NFs three years prior to these videos. And that's not to mention what goes on in every 15-year-old's Xbox Live lobby. She did it If all of that wasn't enough, Blair was also paying people hundreds of dollars to sift through material to find compromising clips of the click. I need you to help find the click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I will pay you $200 to find it. Blair spending more money than most people spend on groceries to expose some Swedish dude for saying the R word. As for why, it seems like it was either out of jealousy that his own channel was taking off or out of spite that he left the collab channel due to her behavior and no longer wanted to be her buddy. Why would she go through all this trouble, even spend money just to try to ruin myself and others. Why would she do all of this to someone who considered her a friend? However, this wasn't even the worst part. Got click saying the N-word apparently, and here we have a, a YouTube link. 16 seconds in, the alt account is gonna love this one. This was in reference to an anonymous Twitter account Blair was running with the intention of sowing dissent among the click's viewers and damaging his reputation. She carried this out not only on Twitter, but also on Reddit, because of course it was on Reddit. She made the following post pretending to be a random click fan. I saw the sad milk announcement 
announcement. I follow all the milkmen on their social media. I'm seeing the comments on their new announcement and I feel there's a big piece of the puzzle that's missing. We don't know what happened. I made an account on Reddit to see if this subreddit is active and I see you're still talking about this too. I think this is a very good place to vent and rant about what I figured out because no one else was talking about it. So I'm really wondering if I'm just freaking out over nothing. Like, it really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, one topic leaving his supporter server and then watching so many of his mods disappear and Wonderstruck talking about how he hates his friends fighting and even Clicky not streaming as much and deleting some of his streams and clips. I think something happened guys. I think I figured out what really happened. I was a big fan of Click. I thought his streams were a great way to interact with people like me even if I couldn't donate as much. This post goes on to claim that Blair must have seen Click's old slur usage and that's what actually caused Sad Milk to dissolve. After Blair posted to Reddit with her official account, she then used this alt account asking if this was some kind of cover-up and claiming to be disappointed that Blair would hang out with someone who used the R slur and F slur. The Doobie Schmerz Reddit also replied to other users saying the click needed to apologize and that he couldn't erase the past. The same scheme of having all her alt accounts interact with one another was repeated on Twitter. There, her bio simply read, I know the truth. Her tweets included, blocking me to run away from the fact that the click said the n-word doesn't make you look good unless you're okay with this language. And imagine not apologizing for saying the n-word. The account was even responding to Def Noodles at the peak of his popularity, trying to get him to cover the click's horrifying language. Keep in mind, all of this was Blair. On her official account, she would tweet about how non-POC creators shouldn't use that word, and then respond to herself on the alt account showing her former collaborator using it a decade prior. When people would tweet about being unproblematic streamers, she would respond with the same, even to her fellow collaborators on the Sad Milk channel. The account went inactive in November 2020, the same month it was created. After a full week of spamming friends, colleagues, YouTubers, and anyone she thought could kickstart a significant controversy, Blair shelved the project. Regardless, the proof of her intentions remained on Discord. Here is the same account Doobie Schmertz on Twitter. This was a account I remember distinctly from 2020-2021 that was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat, you name it, you name it. At the time, I wrote it off as a disgruntled troll with a little bit too much time on their hands and tried my best to ignore it. This was Blair all along. She was making alt accounts to spread her stuff because she probably knows deep down inside that the stuff she was digging up on me and all the stuff she was doing was so petty that she could never actually make a public statement of it. So she did this just to get back at an ex-colleague. She did this. She paid people to dig up dirt, make alt accounts, harass me for months. Why? The top comment on Click's video was from Oz Media himself, who had assisted Blair with a lot of her shenanigans. Hey everyone, I wanted to thank the Click for being so forgiving with how complicit I was with a lot of Blair's behavior, especially with her alt account. I should have done more to stop her, I, I honestly don't remember much, but I've seemed to mentally distance myself from these actions and my involvement. This doesn't excuse my part in this, I at the time was apparently aware of Blair doing this. I don't remember my involvement. All I have to go off of is that screenshot Click showed at the given timestamp. I have a lot of growing I need to do to fix the mistakes I made with backing someone I genuinely believe was the right choice. I'm taking responsibility now though and admitting that I f***ed up by not only backing the wrong horse, but doing nothing when this horse seemingly started to kick and bite people. Yes, the horse will be a horse, but I could have probably done more. The remainder of the comment section consisted of fans expressing their shock at these revelations. When posts about the drama started spreading to Blair's own subreddit, they were deleted before they could gain any traction and then the reddit was shut down. Meanwhile, other subs were readily spreading the info from the video, appalled at how vindictive and unhinged her behavior behavior was. Tweets went viral calling her a garbage human being, while others reposted their messages from the comment section sharing their sympathies for those she tried to hurt. As public distaste for Illuminati grew, her subscriber count fell, in excess of 10,000 to 20,000 per day. On May 11th, Wonderstruck released his own video, detailing his own experience working for Blair, reiterating everything he said in the thread. While his claims were less shocking, they still added to the overall narrative of how unstable Blair was and still is.
The cat was officially out of the bag, and now miscellaneous pieces of Blair's past were coming back to haunt her. With the veneer of charitability she had put up gone, every old drama she had been through was relitigated. For example, Blair had previously collaborated with the commentary talk show host Tommy C, contributing to the Shot from the Point news channel. After a distasteful joke was made about her friend, she logged into the channel and deleted every upload she was a part of. Uploads where she ironically played a caricature of a pro-cancel culture, dyed hair, social justice warrior. When criticized for this move by Nicholas Diorio, Blair contacted the artist whose art he utilized for the thumbnail and encouraged them to file a DMCA takedown on the video, out of spite for being criticized. When the video was reinstated, she contacted another copyright holder to try and do the same. The title of it was, Have Your Mods Flag This One Down, Bitch. <laughs> so it's funny that he titles the video that, and then the video gets flagged down. For the time, this drama was swept under the rug. Tommy C., Nicholas Diorio, and Tipster didn't exactly have the pull to get it into the drama news cycle, and Blair had moved communities to a new audience of 160,000 subs. But now, people are finally discussing this four-year-old drama, since it shows Blair's behavior is not a new phenomenon. Ever since the revelations about her behavior surfaced, Blair has remained silent. Her videos continue to receive around 100,000 views per upload, but many of the top comments now focus on her off-screen conduct rather than the content itself. Her subscriber count is in freefall, and so far, she's given no indication that she'll be responding to her critics anytime soon. Given the magnitude of the drama, it's difficult to imagine any kind of response to it that'd be satisfactory. A comparison many have made is to Creepshow Art, another female commentary YouTuber known for criticizing others while presenting herself as morally superior, despite later being revealed through leaked private messages to be a pathological liar and manipulator, as well as borderline stalker. However, one key difference is that there were hints of Shannon's deceptive behavior in her videos, whereas Blair appeared normal and reasonable in her content. The true extent of Blair's twisted mindset could only be glimpsed at by looking at the destruction left in her wake. As for whether Blair's reputation could ever recover, it's unlikely. This situation has deeply impacted the way she's perceived by her audience, though it is possible for her channel performance to recover over time. She seems to be making efforts to move forward and rebuild, but overcoming the public's negative perception of her will be a significant challenge along the way. More than anything, she's lost the opportunity to befriend other creators. Who would want to work with someone who might pay people to dig up your 10-year-old videos to find dirt if you ever get on their bad side? Who runs a handful of alt accounts spanning multiple websites dedicated exclusively to exposing her former friends? And that's on top of the general deceitfulness we've seen. Spreading lies, leaking someone's suicide note, abusing the DMCA system to silence criticism, and smearing someone as a predator protector because of one incident in their public Discord server that they weren't even aware of. You would think that using someone's honest mistakes, or even simply their vulnerabilities against against them is the last thing anyone who claims to care about those who are weak and marginalized would be doing. Guess I'm wrong. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone.